As I always say, reading the road ahead and planning ahead is one of the most important things you can do as a driver, whether you're just starting out or you have a full license or anywhere in between. It's so crucial, especially in town, when lots of things can happen at the same time. In this video, I'm going to show you a 20 second clip of me out driving recently. And in that 20 seconds, we're going to highlight 10 hazards or potential hazards that you might face on any drive in town, for example, on your driving test. So it's literally like a hazard every two seconds, which is not uncommon when you're driving in an urban area. If you enjoy the content and you would like to show your support, then you can do so by making a voluntary donation by PayPal. Links will be in the description and in the first pinned comment. And thank you in advance for any support. Much appreciated. Okay, let's get on with the video. So here I've just taken a left turn onto a one-way street and I'll be taking um, a right turn soon at lights up ahead. But I'm just going to let it play out first just so you can see the next 20 seconds or so of driving and then we'll go back over it and look for those hazards that I mentioned at the start of the video. So here it is now, I'm just going to play it out now. So let's go back now and look at that clip of driving in a bit more detail. So I've just taken the left turn um, here. I'm coming onto a one way street. Now, if we just pause it here, we can see our first two hazards or potential hazards. Remember, it doesn't have to be um, actual danger. It can just be a warning sign of potential danger in the future. And that's what the bins are. There's three bins there neatly stacked up against the house. And that just leads me to believe that there might be bin lorries out collecting rubbish. If there are, I may have to deal with limited visibility. I may have to deal with um, a tricky overtaking maneuver, let's say. Um, I may have to watch out for the bin men uh, jumping on and off with minimal warning from the back of the truck, things like that. So it just, again, it just gives me an idea of what could be up ahead in the vicinity of this geographical area. Just a little bit further up then, we have a couple of people having a nice old chat there on the side of the road. Two of them have their back to traffic, but look at the dog. The dog is on a lead there and the dog looks like it's stretching a little bit towards the road. Now I'm not overly worried about it because I'm pretty confident that the uh, person holding the dog has him on a tight leash but still the dog is facing the road if he saw another dog on the other side or he got excited for some reason he could easily jump off the lead or um, escape from the owner's um, possession let's say so again it's something that I need to be aware of uh, in that case now if we just go forward a little bit here and pause it again we'll notice here something that you might not have noticed um, initially and that is a little bit of a gap in traffic there between the two cars and a pedestrian right in the middle of that gap. You can see the pedestrian there just kind of in the blue coat. Now, whenever I see a gap in traffic and a pedestrian coming down, I'm always just aware that the last car here could potentially see an opportunity to let the pedestrian cross. So it doesn't happen in this case, but I'm kind of aware of it anyway and I'm just alert to the existence of a pedestrian walking on the left there towards me. If we play it on another little bit then, you'll see that there's a yellow box there. Now I'm in the right lane, I'm going into the right lane, sorry, so the yellow box is not necessarily a big deal for me, but if I was going straight or left, I would need to be very aware of that yellow box. And with the pedestrian coming down as well, some cars might um, stop before the yellow box, well, hopefully they'll stop before the yellow box, if they're obeying the rules of the road, they will. And if the pedestrian feels like crossing, um, a pedestrian might take the opportunity to cross over the yellow box. Now that doesn't happen here, but it just goes to show you that if I highlight it to you in this video, you might be aware of it in future, that it could potentially happen in future. So I'm aware of the pedestrian and I'm aware of the yellow box and the other road markings too, like the double yellow lines and the directional white arrows painted on the ground. You'll also notice there on the right, 
uh, the orange sign. So that's a diversion sign and it's orange. So that means it's a roadwork sign. So I've made a note of that and I'm aware that there could be roadworks of some type up ahead. And that could lead to further potential hazards like maybe an uneven surface, maybe a flagman, maybe something like that I need to be aware of. So again, I'm aware of these things just in case I have to take preventative action further up. Now, if we play it on a little bit, you'll see that the car in front of me here is taking a very wide turn. So I need to be aware of that. It, it doesn't affect me in this instance because I'm keeping about, what, 20, 25 meters back from him there. But if I was a little bit closer to him, I'd need to be very aware of him just swinging out there. Now, hopefully, if I was a bit closer, he'd check his mirrors and he wouldn't do that. Um, but he is swinging very wide there. And if we play it on a couple more seconds you'll see the reason he's doing that is because a pedestrian has decided to place himself right on the corner here of a very tight corner that is and he doesn't look like he's making any effort to step back or to be extra alert for traffic he's kind of standing there um proud as punch like a peacock showing off his feathers and he is apparently oblivious to the dangers that are around there but that's pedestrians for you. They don't re they're not really that tuned into the dangers of traffic. And as a driver, whatever level you're at, whether you're an inexperienced learner or you're getting ready for your test, never ever underestimate the stupidity of Irish pedestrians. So this person didn't do anything too stupid. He stayed on the corner, but it's something that you just need to be aware of. Again, it's not a big deal for me because I happen to be going right. But of course, if I was going left, I'd have to be taking preventative action like that car in front of me did. He swung out a little bit. That might need um, a right mirror check before I swing out uh, just to make sure there's no one behind me. And then I'd finish my left turn. But as I said, I'm going right here, so it's not a big deal to me. But I am aware of it because if I was taking a left in future, I'd need to be aware of these type of things that are dangerous or potentially dangerous to me and the pedestrian. And then just a few seconds later then, we have um, some more pedestrians doing what they're best at, and that is walking out onto the road when they shouldn't be. As I said, pedestrians, they're not the brightest sparks on the old bonfire, so always expect the unexpected with them. And look at this first person here. I mean, she's pushing a pram. There's a baby in that pram probably. And what's she doing? She's walking right across a busy crossroads in Wexford um, when the traffic has um, green lights, as you can see there. So again, it's not a huge big deal to me because I'm going right. But if I was going straight or if the car on my left in the left lane was going straight, he or she would have to be very, very aware of that. And they probably have to stop um, just before where the pedestrian is crossing, because if the pedestrian has already started crossing the road, then the driver has to yield to the pedestrian. When the pedestrian in front walks out with the pram there, you can see the pedestrian behind her also walking out. It's kind of like if one does it, they all do it. So that's sometimes all it takes is one pedestrian to cross recklessly and others then will follow. So again, it didn't impact my driving hugely. I was aware of it in the corner of my eye, but I would need to be extra aware of it if I happen to be going straight. Now, as I'm about to take the turn, as I'm about to turn the wheel, you'll notice there that the sun is temporarily blinding me. So that's another big hazard there. And you don't really want to be looking directly at the sun there. So you'll notice here that I use this as my opportunity to get my last look to the left. So as I'm turning and just as the sun kind of dazzles me a little bit, I'm giving a glance or two to the left. And that means then that as soon as I'm finished with my last look to the left, the glare and the dazzling effect of the sun is nearly over or virtually over. So I can continue to focus ahead then. And then once I'm on the new road, then um, I can see two things here on my left. I can see a pedestrian and on my right, I can see a bin. Now, we already seen the bins before, but look at this bin here. If you look closer, it looks like it's full. It hasn't been emptied yet. So that means that there could very well be bin trucks coming this way or coming behind me, coming from front of me, wherever. They could be in the general geographic area and looking to collect this bin. So if you see a full bin, you can kind of expect to see or to meet bin lorries in the near future. If it's empty, just watch out. Just in case it's a windy day, it could easily blow over as well. So bins, empty, full, they can give you clues of what to expect and what might be ahead. The pedestrian on the left looks fine. He's not doing anything uh, dangerous or untoward, but there's no pedestrian crossing in this area uh, nearby anyway. 
And I know from my own knowledge of Wexford that town is on this side, the right side. So although there's no danger here, I'm just conscious of the fact that if this guy is walking towards town, he may look to cross the road from left to right soon. So I'm just aware of that for the few seconds that I'm behind him. Uh, but I don't worry about that once I'm beside him and once I've gone past him. But it's just good to be aware. That's that's why it's always good to be aware of the local area that you're doing your testing. So you get familiar with the test routes and therefore you can be familiar with things like, say, for example, as I described here, the busy part of town is on the right. So there's probably slightly more of a chance that he might look to cross to the right further up ahead, especially if he shares some body language with you, like looks over his right shoulder, for example, he might be looking for an opportunity to cross. Now, he doesn't have the right of way, but, you know, if he starts to make a move across the road and he puts his foot on the road, well, then you have to stop and give him right of way. I don't want you to overanalyze it. I don't want you to overthink it. I'm just trying to paint a picture here of hazards and potential hazards that you might face as a learner driver when driving in town. So to summarize, when you're driving a car, make sure you're concentrating and you're focusing on what's ahead. Try and scan the road as much as you can without focusing on the one thing too much. Even as a pedestrian, you can do the same things. So if you're out walking, um, you might be able to watch what other cars and what other people are doing. And you can use that experience then to help you when you are driving. If you're a passenger in a car, you can also be planning ahead and reading the road ahead without the added pressure of having to operate the gears, steering and clutch. So as a passenger in a car, watch the road ahead. Watch what the people are doing. Look at what that cyclist is doing. Make a note of the road markings and signs, especially if it's an area in which you're doing lessons or a driving test in in future. Don't get distracted by conversation or by playing loud music in your car. If you're learning to drive, you need to take every opportunity you can to concentrate and focus and be free of any distractions such as loud music, which is only going to be a distraction if you're wanting to increase your skills and be a better driver and pass that test. If you're learning to drive and hoping to do a driving test soon, just remember it's a journey, not a destination. And always just take it one road at a time. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I'll be back soon with another driving lesson video. So I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching and bye for now.